We did it. We are selling ammo. Nazoammo.com. We teamed up. Keystone Munitions, quality, premium product. We're selling it online. What do you do? You go to nazoammo.com. First thing that pops up, what's this? It's an email list. What's the email list do? It's going to give you access to promo codes. It's going to give you access to events, T-shirts, apparel, everything we're doing. Get on that email list. You want 45? 45 is not on the website, but then it's coming in. You're ahead of the curve. You're ahead of the guy who's just finding out about it. You're a part of the family. Very fast and furious how we do everything around here. Nazo Ammo. We are moving Keystone Munitions. Premium products. We're doing it. You want to pick up? You don't want to have it sent? You're Carl. You live down the road? Pick up Nazo at the promo. Promo code at the end. Now you're picking up ammo here. We're doing it, man. We are doing it. Nazo Ammo. www.nazoammo.com. Small town. Big ammo. At Sabrachi Jewelry Design or Sabrachi. I don't even say his name right anymore because of Zach. He's a sponsor of Now We Go and he's a sponsor of this show. He's a dual sponsor. He's a gemologist. He's a jeweler. He's specialized in CAD design and he's also a branding specialist. You need anything at all done in those categories. Matt is the best motherfucker for that. It's D'Antonio and Klein Jewelers in Philadelphia, PA, and he's also going to be doing it soon to be in Lehigh Valley, PA. You can call or DM for appointments. He's in Philly on 726 Sanson Street and you can follow him on social media at Sabraki Jewelry Design. He's making, he's made pendants for finishers. We're working on stuff together. It's not just jewelry. We're working on pendants and all kinds of things. He's making rings. He can do anything that you need from design to gems to jewelers. He is the real deal and I'm a, I'm excited. He's a childhood friend who grew a diamond business. He's a jeweler. We did a podcast with him. It's a cool story. Check him out. Sabraki Jewelry Designs. Influencer, TikToker, entrepreneur, OnlyFans are, at this point I'm just adding ERs, show stalker, gypsy sister Kelly Lynn. She's sponsoring the show. And all you little boys who hit me up in my DMs, look at that, man. She's in a bikini. Go. Go. Go pay for it. Go pay for it. Go over to her Instagram. You want to know what Kelly's doing? Guys and girls, because girls, you can learn what she's doing. She's making a lot of money. You go over to at the Gypsy Sister. You click on the link in her bio. After you look at all her pictures, a lot of good content. She's putting out content. She's an influencer, crushing TikTok. So you get into that that Instagram and then you, you click on it. And then they got your links. You got all your links now. You can see everything she's doing. Everything. She's doing merch. You'll pick up a shirt or a pillow. You want to sleep next to her? That's what I do. I got six of them in my bed. TikToker. You want to see her dance a little bit? See her dance on the railroad? Go there. She's an entrepreneur, an influencer, a TikToker. We're doing a podcast together. She's got a web page coming. Should have asked me to do it. It'd be done. And she's a counselor. Girls, you want to learn how to do what she's doing? Go check it out. All information is at, at Gypsy Sister on Instagram. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you for finally taking the step towards OnlyFans. And you can go check it out, guys. Get out of my DMs and get into hers. Thank you, Kelly. Precision Laser. Precision Laser is a family-owned aesthetic laser practice in Easton, Pennsylvania that was founded in 2019. They offer laser hair removal, laser tattoo removal, vascular and pigmented lesion removal, acne treatment, and more. Their team of licensed experts use cutting-edge technology and safe laser protocols to deliver you the best skin results throughout Easton, New Jersey, and the greater Lehigh Valley. They provide free consultations and affordable pricing to make laser treatments accessible to you all. To learn more about their services or book an appointment Appointment, please go to precisionlaserspecialist.com or call 484-306-0089. They are located at 42 South 3rd Street in Easton, PA, 18042. What are they running this summer? Hair removal. I'd like to get this whole thing removed because of what do I want? A summer beach bod. They are running for $165 per session. You pick two. Armpits, bikini Brazilian, upper legs, lower legs. This is what we're doing with them. I'm excited to have them and I'm excited. Excited for them to be working with us. They're on the podcast. You can check out everything they're doing on the website. And thank you for being a sponsor. Look good this summer. Look good. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is episode 160. Welcome back. You. Right. Pro Build's back in the house. 
Uh, you're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have you pick up some of the interviewing today. Um, I want you to interview or uh, introduce uh, who you brought with you tonight and uh, what he does with you. All right. This is Nick Robertson. He is our videographer, photographer, media extraordinaire. <laughs> he, he does all the heavy work on the weekends for us. Um, I don't know. Uh, what does Nick do? Nick does absolutely everything that George can't absolutely not do. So I follow the both of your social media pages or for that you have for the pro builds and then the dig 610 so he, all the mm. videos and stuff on the pro builds he's the one cutting and editing and doing all that stuff for the race team absolutely everything yeah yeah how did you get into doing uh video stuff that's a funny story uh he's like i'm not telling you <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret no um he's like can i leave <laughs> <laughs> no um <laughs> It's funny because like it just happened because I was frustrated with what I was doing otherwise. I went to school for music, uh, went to college for music, and then just got a full-time job doing bullshit that I don't enjoy doing, frankly. And uh, I just got super frustrated to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm going to try uh, photography first. And then uh, started making videos of me just like doing stupid stuff in my apartment. And... Uh, it just snowballed from there. Yeah. I uh, got asked to do some stuff for uh, my friend's brewery. Um, and, you know, we were doing wacky, uh, wacky videos for a couple of years. And then, uh, you know, I always liked uh, mountain biking. And uh, George is actually who kind of got me into downhill and like getting faster and like enjoying being out there in the woods. And uh, it was just a no brainer. Like, if I'm already doing video for my friends, I might as well do video for one of my best friends. So. It's yeah. weird how uh, stuff like that always starts where you're just uh, dicking around with stuff in your apartment. Because I remember, um, th well, this started in my apartment. And then, like, we used to try and do video stuff. And it's hard to do video stuff because you have the idea of it in your head. But then to actually, like, get into editing and all that. Well, how did you learn how to edit and everything? Was it just kind of like fucking around in Final Cut, YouTube videos? Like, you know, yeah. uh, the stuff that you do is impressive. It's not like it's just bullshit thrown together in, uh, you know, your phone. Uh, you obviously know yeah, what you're fair. doing, so fair. like as much as you wanted to just kind of sweep that under the rug, there was obviously mm. a shitload of amount of work that went into figuring out how to do all this. Fair, what what fair. drove you to keep trying to figure it out more? Appreciate that. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, it was all just me holed up in my uh, my apartment for hours on end, just uh, messing around in. Uh, I use Premiere. Um, messing around in Premiere. Does everyone use Premiere? I use Final Cut. I but I only use Final Cut because the guy I work under uh -huh. knows Final Cut, so it's easier for me to call him and be like, "Yo, how do I fix this?" Then or take the whole computer to his apartment or his house. You know yeah. what I mean? Like my no, troubleshooter sure. yeah. was always Final Cut. Yeah, I mean, you know what's funny about that is I actually get Final Cut through my job, my my full time job. But uh, it just happened that. Everybody that I was learning from was on Premiere. Is that weird how that works? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I have Final Cut. I could learn this on my own. But also, when you go, frankly, when you go on YouTube things for how to do certain stuff on video editing, nine times out of ten they're using Premiere. Like that's yeah. it. Just happens that way. And there are definitely professional people using uh, Final Cut. And then I thought about switching, but mm, it's night know. and day like with that Premiere. stuff too. It's oh, like yeah. you can't. I mean, you can, but. The learning curve to pick up on what it is. Learning curve is stupid hard. It's yeah. Like, well, Final yeah. Cut, I don't know. I don't use Premiere ever, but I don't know like mm -hmm. how that works. But with Final Cut, there's no explanation to anything you do <laughs> at all. Like there's no like, because well, I started out, I, I started out, I started an iMovie. Yeah. And that was pretty decent to get around. Mm -hmm. And it was very basic. And then when I grew out of iMovie, I went into Final Cut. And then I was like, oh, there's no like, uh, there's no room for buffer. There's no explanation of this. There's no anything at all that helps you oh yeah it's just anxiety yeah um <laughs> that's funny that's i mean that's kind of apple as a company <laughs> in general honestly uh which you know i have my opinions about but um yeah premiere is my preferred editing tool and uh in terms of learning it yeah just hold up watching youtube videos taught myself trial and error um Luckily, the brewery that I was working for, the uh, the owner and the person that I was working side by side with, uh, actually had a, a film editing degree, um, and is a perfectionist for sure. So, uh, love the guy to death, and 
honestly, I, I attribute a lot of... What brewery was it? Uh, bond Brewing. Uh, I, I knew Bethlehem. you were going to say that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I like the stuff that he does. So you, that's, yeah. so you knew Todd through Absolutely, doing yeah. the, the, the Santa Claus uh, mm. videos and all that. So that was you behind a lot of that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. For about two and a half ish years yeah i was doing um krampus the krampus yeah. video yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. did krampus <laughs> um it's funny i actually know todd uh Jeknovic from my old next door neighbors um alexis and uh rich ha! kovacs yes. yes i know them all um, my god some of the parties we had back in the day that was incredible um just me and two of my friends from high school happened to live right next door to them. Yeah, There's yeah, like, I've been over oh, there a couple of times. Like, when they, oh, sick. they lived okay, right cool. there. Yeah, yeah, they were right, right in, uh, right in downtown. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, started uh, just out of frustration and worked my way to as professional as I try to be now. I mean, you know, I'm always, always wanting to get better for sure. But uh, yeah, based on feedback from uh, from friends and peers, so. Yeah. How did you guys get hooked up then? Were you looking to were you looking to build your social media up for, you know what I mean? Like the you have to have a vision of what you wanted to do. So was the vision his or were you like, "Hey, I think we need to start doing it this way?" Like how did you kind of guys come together with the idea for the media because that's also not something where you're just like, "Yeah, we just started working together." Like right. there's a general plan and an idea how you want the social media to look. Did you let him take over or was this a general concept and idea you had from the get-go? I mean, so uh, if you follow like World Cup racing, they all have kind of like a feel to their yeah to their videos. They're very like um, it's not so much just the racing. It's like the racing, the camaraderie, the everything, the how it all comes together. Um, I the one thing I notice is that the guy who's doing the videos has a very personal relationship with the team. So, like, everyone he knows on the team, it's, like, on a personal basis. It's kind of hard to uh, to build a type of relationship when you're seeing each other very short periods of time throughout the year. And it's, like, in a very intense moment. Like, you know, Nick has to mm -hmm. interview these kids, like, after practice, after, after seating, which seating is, like, a qualifying, um, and after the race. So, Nick's... Th three or four times he spends talking to these kids it's like after the most personal points in their in their weekend um to do that you have to kind of have a, a built relationship with these kids and and with me too right because i'm still kind of like nervous around a camera every time nick points a camera <laughs> at me because he uh, acknowledges the fact that he's pointing a camera at me and <laughs> and he's about to say something to me so it's, it's like kind of it's kind of hard it's awkward it is awkward um, especially that uh, I'm there too doing the same thing. Like uh, that's a very intimate moment for me too, because um, you know he's seen me at my like a very vulnerable points. You know, like no sleep, no nothing, going on zero fuel, and like you know these kids are depending on you to keep them. I mean, I, I don't even kind of can't even like really say what my role is in it, but like. You know, Nick is there almost as a uh, as a relief. You know what I mean? Like when Nick's around, it's like it's like a relief. You know, <laughs> so um, I don't know. I think it's like hard to, to pick somebody to do that. I, I couldn't even tell you anybody else I would want doing it. Or, I mean, like he's grown as we've grown. So I think like with that, it brings you see that in the videos. You you can tell that the person that's making the videos like cares and you know has this relationship with the team and and it's important to build that relationship with the team and then um you know the longer they do it the more that they're now comfortable so now they're not talking to a camera they're talking to him mm -hmm. and then now you can really start getting the whole feeling and the vibe across because right. i'm guessing what you would want is the conversation you would have with them when they come down and they're like hey man right, like that right, was right. crazy i went down around right, that right, fucking right. thing like yeah. the, the the moment where they're so excited to tell you how they performed right. you need captured yeah, so those, like those conversations aren't usually like that though even yeah. like at the best con even like at the most these kids are expecting to win at any point at, at all times right they're mm -hmm. not going out there to second or third place it's yeah. the first place or, or and then like i said man you catch them in this like super vulnerable point and for example like these kids are two different people when they put on a helmet and they take off a helmet you know they're not even the same 
person, the personality that you see on track and the personality you ca- un- catch under the pits is uh, is very different. So to capture that, you have to have an eye for it, you know. Um, all of Nick's videos are very personal, no matter what it is. It could be about beer, it could be about whatever it is, but like even his photography is like super personal. And um, that's like what I wanted. I wanted you to like watch a video and you kind of like can go through the emotions of what uh, one of our weekends are, mm. what it's like. Because I don't think like a lot of people even realize like we're, what we're even out there doing. No, you know? I don't. I don't think so either. Uh, and right. I think that's why it's important right. to have him and to have the social media doing that. Because right. if you're not showing that, and you're just, it's just not what anyone's comprehending is what's going on. I didn't know what it was. And then when I started following and I was like, Oh, this is some serious shit. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> like they're everybody not fucking around. Like, like yeah. yeah. Everybody pictures like their dad, like on their $200 Walmart bike at Jacobsburg. Yeah, and it's just not like that. that at all. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's crazy yeah. because like, all right. So to capture that, mm. there's so many aspects of it. Right. But we're on a mountain. All right. So how do you capture the whole entire thing? Right. You got to put a backpack <laughs> and put every little piece of equipment that you could possibly need for the whole entire day. Your sandwiches, your water, video cameras, backup cameras, mm-hmm. GoPros for the guys. Batteries. Batteries. Yeah. And, backup batteries. And, uh, <laughs> and sometimes, like, you know, we're in West Virginia. You're talking about a 4,000 foot mountain and it's uh, raining like torrential downpours mm-hmm. all day. The biggest talk about inside of the pits was where's Nick? <laughs> Has anybody seen Nick today? Because there's like, there's like literally rivers going down the mountain. You know what I mean? Like the dude has a backpack. I mean, I didn't even see him leave with an umbrella. You know, so, uh, you know, I don't think people take that into consideration. They're watching one of these videos and it's like, you know, this is all shot like on site, right? There's no, there's no camera crew. It's one dude. Well, speaking of doing that, how did you get your format down and your formula for how you wanted it to look yeah. the way that he wanted it? Because I'm sure it took multiple times of doing. Mm-hmm. And then, like I was talking to the last guest I had uh, that where we were talking about uh, photography and stuff. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it takes a specific person to kind of break that barrier to, like, get the shot and, like, you know, not be afraid to stand a little bit this way and like you know what i mean like to just kind of put yeah. yourself out there so what was the process of getting that all down yeah i mean i think oh, hey, <laughs> there won't be new there won't be flies in the new st- <laughs> the new studio won't have flies <laughs> that was weird. I, I could hear him yeah. i was like oh cool yeah. um no i mean i think like i wish uh, you would have just like hit it and <laughs> broke everything <laughs> dude what are you doing <laughs> it's uh i don't know i think it's very comical because i'm not a big dude so like when george is talking about like me hiking all this like it looks pretty funny frankly like i've got like a 50 pound backpack on and i'm hiking down like a two and a half mile like 45 grade steep hill um so that's an interesting day um but how do i come up with the format and stuff i mean i think to me i mean i've been so immersed in mountain biking videos and mountain biking content and stuff like that because it's something I genuinely enjoy doing for so long that um, I know what I would want to see and I know the people that are involved and when I talk to them and when I ask them like I don't know I I just try to be like a quirky dude and like hopefully that comes across and like it encourages other people to open up about um, you know what they're doing and and uh be a little more natural in front of the camera um and uh yeah i mean the format i watched just shit loads of videos from professional races uh like the world cup races uh primarily we took what i'm doing right now for for pro builds from um the santa cruz syndicate we really really liked like the inspiration was from them um it's not the same but it is definitely from them um we just liked what they were doing like the videographer was just in it they were part of the crew they were having dinner with the people they were um there when the guys were just sitting in the in the tents on their phones waiting for the race like um just being there being a part of it and like I don't know. I'm a pretty personal dude. I want to. I want to know everybody. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I love that style 
of um, like that. And, and, and I notice it more and more. Um, and it's what I want to start doing with vlogging mm-hmm. is just giving the personal aspect of like taking the curtain away and 100%. being like, hey, like this is what we do before the build up. Yeah. And then you could see like be like, oh, man, like that everybody looks nervous. And like you take everybody on the journey, but you're also but it's not easy to do because you want to showcase why you love it. Mm-hmm. But you can't do that because then it would be a five hour fucking film. Right. So you have to take like the best things that you pay attention to that other people might not pay attention to and then the idea is to like you're along with them and if it's done correctly you feel like you're sitting next to them and it's a really cool fucking vibe and it's a lot of the shit that i'll get into where if it's like a youtube series or you're following along on social media like if you catch that person Mm -hmm. now they're there for every episode they're there to hang out they're there to do it and then if they're motivated to get into like biking and stuff like that or they're a part of the culture already Mm -hmm. it's it's a really good follow along yeah i mean i think um you bring up a good point like being the authentic portion showing the behind the scenes like social media whoa cool um social media (laughs) social media has changed like so much over the last 10 years and like um i think it went from like really shitty content to like overproduced yeah and then now it's kind of balancing back out to be like kind of an in-between and it really is like a hard balancing act like i'll have shots that are you know i'm doing them handheld where like George is rolling up with uh, <laughs> George is rolling up with a, a full pie of pizza on his bike, and it's like okay, that's not something that's like super well produced, but like it's you know it's the behind the scenes, it's the the stuff that adds that buy in from the viewer, um, and frankly, it's just funny in the moment. Like yeah, I'm gonna film my friend roll up on with a pie yeah, of pizza. Yeah, but like, who if you're cares? there all yeah. day and you want you haven't Hell eaten yeah. and all you want is fucking pizza, exactly. right. the best part of the day is seeing him come over the hill and everyone's like, hundred percent. <laughs> it's fucking pizza 100 no, percent, dude like being stuck in the rain that t- like literally west virginia was probably the hardest rain i've ever been in my life and i was halfway down the track <laughs> it's just like oh okay stop sick yeah so i get back up you know he's got pizza i'm like oh I'm, I'm fucking pumped about this but then it's also i want those really nice polished shots of the dudes riding because yeah. they're putting in those kids are 17 18 19 uh, the one kid's 11 and yeah. they're putting in hours and hours their their whole life is dedicated to this i want to show it in a way that like shows that they actually give a shit and they're really good and like this is their passion so i don't want to like half-ass that part so it's uh it's a weird balancing axle it's very similar to uh like the the skate videos that Mm -hmm. like before all this when you had to go to the skate shop and buy the video and like they would do like the real heavy cinematography and then it would cut to like the dudes fucking around in the van like lighting fireworks and shit off and there's there was always that that made you feel like you were on like the road trip with the skate team and like Mm -hmm. what you said i feel like that got lost in the overproduced even like how the skate videos went and like just it turned into this own thing, but I think it's kind of settling back down into this like happy medium where like you're getting really good content again. Yeah. I mean, I think um, <laughs> it's funny because like it's perpetuated by frankly professional YouTubers. And I, I appreciate so much all the like tutorials and uh, all the good content that they put out. But somebody like, for example, uh, your Peter McKinnon or something, um, he is an incredibly famous YouTuber, right? Um, but he does stuff with uh, photography and he does tutorials and things like that. And uh, the... Um, All three of us have now <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I knocked the bottle over, you punched the thing, he dropped the fucking cap. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, him showing an amazing b-roll of coffee and like how to do it yeah and, like everybody gets so juiced up on like yo i want to make this crazy epic looking b-roll of me making coffee or making breakfast or drinking a beer and it's like you ever watch the art of flight on. the snowboard video yes yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. and that, that there's a part in that where they stop and then it's like showing that or it might even be the very beginning i think mm. they roll footage and then they show how it starts and that's the same way where like they do like the fucking he's pouring coffee then it goes to them making eggs and then he's fucking waxing the board and then like packing it up and it's like this whole explanation and you get to see is like in the morning when like the stress levels are high and they're just waking up and they're Mm -hmm. not really talking to each other and they're just like getting ready to get on these fucking red bull helicopters and like do all this crazy shit that you get to see but it was the first time where they open the door into like you know and then then they'll fade into like 
a shooting star and the sunset. And I'm like, man, like you can really take a lot of like different oh. ways of filming shit and oh, yeah. make stuff really cool. And what's awesome now is that like I was into that stuff way back in the day. And in order to mm -hmm. do all that, it was a very difficult process. Now sure. yeah. that shit's just being thrown out on fucking Instagram like it's a daily fucking post for people. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think like and, and for better or worse, it's overdone now. But like I think um in the in something like the art of flight that's like a incredibly well produced film i think that's my favorite uh so good i think my favorite video for like that style absolutely and i think um you know that fits perfectly for your one minute five minute yeah instagram or youtube video i don't think you need a 30 second montage of pouring no. coffee that looks no. incredible like no. showcase the thing that like is really the highlight of the video so for me i try to work the their riding into something that looks really, really good and keep that high energy and, uh, you know, very selective about the music that pumps it up and everything like that, because that's the focus. The behind the scenes stuff, so I want to be raw, I want it to be entertaining and I want it to feel people, like people are there. And then the writing. How do you work your music into it? Do you have a song in your head and then you, you have uh, the footage rolled out to it or do you watch the footage and then think okay i can put this song to it like kind of mm. which way do you go with that or do you use both versions yeah i mean it's uh it's a give or take so both but uh the one that i've been falling into more now is uh i'll watch back the footage which at any one of these races like the west virginia race i probably had two hours of riding footage so i'm just watching back this footage and it's got to be pared down to five minutes yeah or whatever you know a digestible amount uh so i watch back the raw clips right i see okay i like this i like this i like this and then i don't have a song in mind i have like uh the energy that i want for that like okay this needs to be high energy great i'm going to look for a song that like has a sick build up or um hits it just the right way and then that's the the perfect one that i want for that but not a particular song no i that is one of my favorite things to editing and doing content is adding the music because i feel like it's the final touch oh, to dude. completely driving it and then there'll Absolutely. be times where i just drive around and listen to music and i'll like picture things out in my head mm -hmm. and then i get obsessed with creating something to that song or sound and then like when i'm looking mm -hmm. through footage or things i i pick through what i want that to be yeah i i love editing and video stuff and like i did it as a kid when there wasn't a lot of fucking technology for it when we were like using vhs tapes and fucking mm -hmm. you know we grew up on crusty demons of dirt and like all these fucking old school yeah. videos when there wasn't a way to express everything this shit's now pumped out on a daily basis where like you can literally make a fucking reel off of like anything at all and then Absolutely. add music to it as well people eat the reels up dude like it's funny we uh the uh, reels go out 10 times farther because of the oh, music yeah. now yeah yeah exactly because you can put like a real song to it um what's it uh carson from nine to five dude just pumps out reels every day and i was talking to him about it. he's like oh yeah it's great i just used two slow-mo clips and uh, one intro clip and uh, you know I got a 15 second reel that they're gonna love the client's gonna enjoy it. it's like oh, fair enough <laughs> yeah it's uh, very interesting do you do your editing and everything on the road or do you do it when you get back both yeah both yeah I mean um, ideally at the end of a practice day what we'd have some photos and a couple yeah. videos yeah just like the whole idea is to uh it's really hard to explain to these uh, sponsors what you're doing out there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And oh, I didn't think about no that. So one, you got to have a specific. It's the same thing with me. You got to pump uh, out enough content. I mean, dude, it's. I mean, what we're doing, I'm, and I can say this right because we're mm -hmm. the only real team that's doing it in in say the Eastern Hemisphere the way we're doing it. Um, there's other teams that do do it in the United States, but they're like factory teams, so they have like factory backing there's somebody like usually media is predominantly like the biggest portion of where their where their funding's going um just because you know it's what reaches out the farthest and um it, it's kind of like i don't know when i wanted to start this team there was like a whole idea to make it as professional as possible mm -hmm. and make it look like like the like the big teams do it because the, what I'm trying to go after is like a bigger like a bigger support from these companies so they, they it's like you have to show more effort yeah you know what I mean mm -hmm. a lot more effort has to come your way and it's just not even that you know this is like a a, a sport that I'm like super passionate and love and you know like I, what I put into it 
is a hundred percent um free right i'm not making money off of this and i want every aspect of it to be like as 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 the best it could possibly be you know Mm -hmm. um because we're showing we're showcasing what our sport is all about and there's not so many people that are doing this it's almost like a big responsibility right you you have like one shot at this to like one to show the sponsors uh, what you're out there doing too to show the public like hey man there's this like sport that's going on out there and sometimes it's even happening in your backyard you should come check it out mm-hmm. and then three um you know like the sport now i've been doing this for a long time and the sport now is like way different like we just came back from a race it had 400 racers at it and like what 200 of them were under 12 years old yeah yeah crazy so the sport is not, and and it, it's so like and i don't, and i mean like so then there's like 12 to 15 year olds and 15 to 18 year olds but like there is 400 racers there a few years ago you couldn't get 400 racers at a multiple event like an event that had like multiple t- uh types of racing right mm-hmm. the, we went to a downhill event in the south which like the sport wasn't really big in the south it's just growing so it shows me that the sport is like like real healthy and just like like something i, w- I want to keep investing into and the way you invest into it is by showing everybody what what you're out there doing right and mm-hmm. there's like a huge value to what nick does i mean honestly man you don't know what nick does until you put on his backpack and <laughs> and you just do it and go out there and do it because like everybody's like oh man like you know how'd you get it how'd you i, I tell everybody you need a nick you know like everybody needs a nick you know like because it's not just like going out there and giving you a great product, right? It's like there's that dude's like out there doing it. It's yeah, a different it's, thing. And it's not easy to take what is going on and capture it. So like even with like what I plan on doing next with the video vlogs, it's like I have to tell a story. Mm-hmm. So right. like so like I have to like all right, well how are you going to tell this story? Right. All right, well we got to go somewhere. Okay, well you're going to need a camera inside the van facing you so you're going to need that aspect of it then you're going to need b-roll of showing like montage of the travel then when you Mm -hmm. get there before i do anything else i have to go around and shoot anything that i want seen for the day Mm -hmm. then if i want to do a podcast interview i have to set up my podcast studio and set that up then if we do anything else outside of that where if like okay well when we went to the track in jersey so now if i take somebody on the experience of evolve gt i have to get on a bike so now i need a helmet cam for my bike now i have to go around the the course and take the thing all day long so now i'm recording that stuff on top of everything i said plus having to wrap it all up edit that all down put music on it break it into four different parts and like some people just think that like oh yeah it's cool you're doing that and i'm like like i was explaining to somebody and i'm like yo that's a fuck ton of work yeah. like that's a lot of fucking yeah. work to capture all that and you have to do it enough to where you have an eye for it and once you have an eye for it you know how much work it goes into it and then that's when like you have to kind of start and stop yourself from bringing on too much of a load because you you there's you don't want to get too much shit because then you right. have to edit through more so it's like you have to find this like weird balance of like getting the best shots the best shit putting it out turning it around getting it out on time and then going on to the next one because the shit don't stop yeah. and i don't think a lot of people realize what i only know that and because of like why i'm enjoying talking to you is because when i came up doing this friends of mine mm. uh worked for a production company and they were allowed to use the equipment to do music videos and all that shit and oh, i so, they knew i was yeah. into it so i was coming along and i was like the coffee bitch but so, i didn't care because like i got to see how it was all done but that's Absolutely. how i started learning but then when you when, like if you watch a commercial shoot and you're like holy shit that's how a commercial's fucking made oh it's stupid. it's crazy to see the hard. amount of work so it's not like you're just like on the mountain and catching a couple of shots like dude that's a lot of fucking work that goes into every single fucking post and everything like that well you're good at it and you can get fast turnarounds but yeah. I, I think some people just think you're just standing out there with a fucking camera just fucking you know like yeah. it's I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Don't get me wrong, though. I mean, like, I I would not trade that for the world because when I'm out there, like, I'm not thinking about anything else. No. Um, George and I talk about this all the time, but like him going to the races, working on bikes, riding is like his 
uh, essentially therapy, like me going out and shooting and yeah. and filming and editing. That's my therapy. So like when I'm out there for five hours a day and I'm like, you know, making in the moment calls about like what shot I want and everything like that. That's awesome. Because yeah. like nothing doesn't matter. Nothing else You're matters. Free. And I'm enjoying. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's hard, but um, I don't know. Like the running gun style is just how I've been doing it. Like, and when you're doing something for yourself and you're like mm-hmm. doing that, those projects like that, it, it's not the same as if you're working a fucking nine to five, yeah. doing a bunch of work for somebody else. You're creating, mm-hmm. you're passionate about what you're creating. So even though you're creating for him, you're still, and he appreciates what you're doing. Like, you know, all that stuff that I told you mm-hmm. about that race, like I'm going to do all that stuff. Right, right. Like, you know what I mean? There's yeah. no second guessing it. Right. And then, you know, like I just am pointing out the amount of fucking work goes into doing this shit. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no, uh, especially with video production, like I love photography too. Um, and it is very difficult as well, but, uh, yeah, with video production, I mean like the forethought of like showing up, getting the right angle, getting the, making sure that the audio is correct, making sure that, uh, you know, you've got all the gear that you could potentially need for all of it um and then pre-planning what it's going to look like afterwards is uh you know it's it's not easy but um when you enjoy what you're filming it's it's way easier i guess um and luckily right now and i I don't plan on ever changing this but um i am very picky about who i work with um and you know look i have the luxury of working a job that pays my bills which is fantastic but um i think that you know because of that if somebody hits me up and they're like hey do you want to like film this thing for my real estate business maybe but like let's talk about it because if i don't like it like i will turn it down um and that it has been a blessing because like i work with my friends i work on stuff that i enjoy and that makes it not feel like work and that makes it feel incredibly easy so yeah i dig that it's important um especially with what you just said where it doesn't feel like work when um there's a big difference when you first start getting into projects and stuff where it doesn't feel like work Mm -hmm. and then it's i think it's 10 times better in the end with a finished product with it going that way because you know there's a lot of stuff i get to do now where it's like it's like oh this isn't work but it's also everything i'm doing i'm choosing to do like all that travel stuff like i want to do all that it's not something that somebody's paying me to go do it's like i just want to get the fuck out of the area you know what i mean me and nick to a lot of travel (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's uh it's funny because like uh you know george uh you know he's talking to me up all this all this stuff but like it genuinely is something i really want to do and like i'd be doing it either way like i'd you know whether I was making videos or not, I'd be like driving down there and enjoying it. So what was so, it like when you guys got the first video done when like you put up your first post of like his stuff and like, was there kind of a moment where you guys were like, fuck yeah, like this is exactly what we wanted to do. Um, I think just like right from the beginning, there was pretty much like, dude, let's just try to do this and see what it turns out like. Right. Cause I mean me, I'm starting a new team and him, it was kind of like, um, it's a, it's a lot of commitment, right? Um, to travel to all these different places. Um, so this is the first year that we were like, let's do this. Let's like do this and like do like almost make it look like it's bigger than the a production than it is. And yeah, that, and that's the Hopefully. that's the that's the response that we got. Like everybody's like, man, it makes me feel like I'm there. That's what we want. It, it mm-hmm. you know it, it, it like really feels like you guys have like a whole like uh like a whole production company out there that's what we want you know like there's you know we 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 reach out to our sponsors i do like a race report every week every week there's pictures getting sent out and then nick's videos getting sent out there's a big report that goes so it kind of like lines up the report with the video so you as you're watching the video you kind of like get a sense of what's going on and um and lucky enough you know, uh, Nick has some cool stuff to video. We have a phenomenal mm-hmm. group of kids on our team this year. Um, so we get to film kids just like on the rise of of what feel, we feel like is going to be like just like this huge growth. I mean, and honestly, the team has grown and the popularity of the team has grown 
um I mean a lot because of totally. what Nick does. You know what I mean? Because um, no one, it, no one would actually see what we're doing. You know. Mm. So, um, you know, there's like proof. It's like, oh man, this is what we're doing. This is what we're out here. Like, you know, um, Nick suffers along with me when I decide I want to leave on a Thursday at seven o'clock at night to get to somewhere at four o'clock in the morning. Nick's <laughs> like, fuck it, dude. I guess we're driving through the night, dude. And he just co-pilots it. And it's and important I, to have that. I mean, dude, it's not even that. I mean, like, hey, Nick, you want to sleep inside of the van and I'll sleep on the top and you sleep in the bunk underneath and, you know, it might be really uncomfortable and cold. And Nick's like, fuck it, dude, let's do it. You know, it's like whatever it takes to get the weekend, like the mission that we went out there for, right? So when you're working with somebody that's just as crazy, a little bit dumb, <laughs> and just as passionate as you are, whoa, whoa. you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, like, honestly, man, I, I don't know if I'd want to do it with anybody else. It, 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 it takes a certain Same personality, you. you know, like to, yeah. to put yourself through it, you know? And no one's, and like, you know, like no one's out here getting rich, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's even, if, if people knew that, I think it like it, there's more value to it, right? Because it's like just two crazy dudes just out there doing for the love of doing it. Yeah, and I think uh, well, there's there's a lot of things I want to touch on with that. One is when we started doing this, I wanted to overproduce the fuck out of it. We didn't even have a format, and I was just like, we bought like all the equipment and shit we were using, even just for the audio, was so over the top for a podcast. Um, and I just kept thinking, like, hey, look, if I try and do this at a fucking level where top people are doing it, if I come halfway, mm -hmm. I'm still way out further than anyone else who's like, oh, well, we can't do that. Right. We don't have a video guy. Well, it's like, all right, well, get one. You right. know what I mean? Like, you can't, you don't get into shit unless you try to get into it. Mm -hmm. So if you would have taken this and everything you're doing and, and would have had a defeated attitude from the beginning and would have been like, oh, well, I, you know, whatever, we'll just keep it small and like, or, you know, and then you're just posting pictures on Instagram and like a lot of people do that and then they miss the fucking whole idea of social media right. to take people along with the journey. But like, if you don't set your fucking site out far enough, you can get really caught up and never fucking moving forward. Oh, no, for mm -hmm. sure. We're talking about going to Europe next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, how fucking like, dope is that yeah. to follow along with I mean, now? Mm -hmm. I mean, I honestly, I'm one of the, I'm pretty strong believer that if you don't really like put it out there, you're never going to, and I'm not like, you know, like, I don't know what the name of that book is or whatever that, you know, just thinking out loud of an idea and just um, putting it out there is, it's one thing, but like watching it like grow and, and stuff like you know, like I said, man, it's, this is our first year doing it the way we're doing it, but it's mm -hmm. like the way we're doing it is, I mean, it's already at a pretty high level. I mean, I watch some of the videos from uh, the other big companies and it's like, man, our video, the only difference is that we don't have a hundred thousand followers you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. but our, yeah. our our video production and the story and what's going on it's just as interesting but just we're not as big of a team yeah but um you know i think everyone around us sees that like man these guys are really putting in the effort to show people like what the beauty of this sport really is right and and like I, I mean, it's social media, but it's whatever. I, I actually, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like the fact that like I don't have to watch TV to get entertained. Like, um, I love sports. Like, and the coolest thing about sports I always got were those backstories about like yep. athletes. You know, like I forgot which one it is on HBO, but that does it. Like, it used to do it just for boxing, but now it does it for everything. Um, Dan, uh, I know exactly what you're thinking about. I can't think of the Isn't name. Isn't it like a minute or something? It's like. The, like uh, something with the number 100 or something you know, yeah but anyways yeah. um that was always like my favorite my favorite part of uh of sports were like the backstories and stuff and that's what we were looking for we i wanted to do like a video to show like you know like it, it, we're not out there like drinking beers and like camping out and like having a great time it's like you know we're out there doing business yeah and there's like work getting done um nick's out there doing work i'm doing work my guys are doing work everyone's doing work mm -hmm. um and uh and it comes across in the videos you know and that's what i wanted to show because i think like it gets confused sometimes that people think that we're out there just like screwing around and there's no objective to what we're doing but like we're literally trying to build the next usa mm -hmm. team and i want it to come out of the east coast you know like um 
and that's hard, man. Like, you know, you talk to, to these people and the people that actually do this on a, on a bigger level. And it's just, um, it, it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of effort and with very little money and a whole lot of effort. Yeah. <laughs> the less money, the more effort. Yeah, yeah. We've been putting <laughs> the money part's been real little, but the effort part's been tremendous. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we were talking about that when you guys were down here when I was like, yo, I built this shit broke. Yeah. No fucking money at all. Yeah. Gave up my apartment. Yeah. And then my apartment payment was what we fucking did for the studio. And like, sometimes people ask me like, ah, oh, how'd you do all this? And I was just like, I fucked my life up. Yeah, like, but this yeah. equipment costs money though. Yeah, but I'm saying yeah. is like, you know, there was there was different ways we figured out how to right, buy it. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, like, right. you know, we, it was a lot of researching and talking to friends right, and whatnot. And like, right. you know, I remember we started out where we had Jesse's old mixer that's in the back, which I'm going to use for the mobile podcast. Right. And then we had, it was all hand-me-down equipment. Right. It was just, I texted a couple people, hey, do you got audio equipment? Yep. And then they, use it until you get new shit. And then we we upgraded to this because we needed more guests on so then right. when we got this then okay well that was paid for but that was were like monthly payments me working a full-time fucking job then then it was we got microphones and then you know the, the ongoing joke is we like it's been a while since we had to buy equipment but like you know the fuck when we went to video like it was like mm-hmm. fuck dude i just got done paying off the fucking audio equipment right you know and then it's like going back into that and if you don't want to sacrifice for shit and you're okay with just doing this because you love it and getting by with money mm-hmm. and like i've been through some shit and oh, the last four fucking years of doing this and like everything the way it's done it's like my perspective on like how life is is completely fucking changed and like right. i get by that is it. I don't have a bunch of money from doing this, and I've never been happier and more content in my life than any fucking job I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And when I had a shit money, ton of money in the bank, when I was bartending and making a lot of money, when I had complete fucking, when I had complete security working for the post office, and like this here is the happiest, most co- content. Like my mood is completely changed. Right, right. I have better relationships with my parents and the people around me because I'm no longer creatively frustrated. But like, mm-hmm. if you don't need that in your life, then this isn't for you because you definitely are not going to make a lot of money doing this. I will down the road, yeah. but this is, we're talking another 10 more years of work and I already got 12 in it. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're ready to do 24 years of fucking work for something that ain't making money, awesome i'll see you at the finish line but other than that like go go back to doing what you're doing man because it it ain't it ain't cut out for everybody and for you to say that like you guys go on the fucking road and you're not making any money off of this and you're just completely driven by passion that's i love that that's it's awesome totally the two happiest dudes on the hill (laughs) <laughs> on any given day, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know, man. I, uh, it's. I'm sure you get asked a ton of times. Like people ask you, like, why you do it, and and you know, like the logic behind you doing something for no money. It's like really hard to explain to somebody sometimes. Like, man, do I want to make money doing this? Absolutely. Um, do I think I can make money doing this? Possibly. You know, um, mm-hmm. do I think that there should be money in this? Absolutely. Also, because, dude, in our sport, East Coast probably pays so many jobs in those big, gigantic companies, all those big, gigantic bike companies. Mm-hmm. The East Coast is the, the the cycling scene is huge. And the fact that the race programs and stuff don't get much love out here is um I'm trying to change that, you know. But to, how do you change that? You have to, like, show them that there's this this huge thing going on out here and and uh, I think they're now starting to take notice and the cool thing about it is that like we're kind of like the sport isn't new but we're kind of like at the forefront of this whole thing right that's happening out here mm-hmm. right now and uh hopefully man when the when that uh when that um Mountain Dew money comes back because Mountain Dew's been around. <laughs> Sobe. That code red Sobe, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When code red, or like, or maybe like Four Locos comes back and they can sponsor. But That's you know, the, all those big companies, man, they need to start throwing some money out this way, dude. And and I don't mean like towards me, but like towards just like the sport and the events and all that. I went to uh, the last event we were at. Somebody had made a comment about how my team had more sponsors than the event did. <laughs> that's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so what does that say, dude? Yeah. You know, and this is an event that's bringing 400 racers, 
that's dude there are so many parents there and absolutely you know like i walk around the parking lot and i take like a note of like oh man look at all these tents that are made by this one company look at all these chairs that are made by this one company Mm -hmm. look how many uh um uh what do you call it uh like that one ice box we have oh, yetis yeti. yeah look how many yeah. yetis are here dude look at all this stuff gotta have the yeti that we pay for like all this stuff that we pay for and there's none of that money coming into this sport dude none of it you know like uh, um a lot of the companies that i reach out to for sponsorship um they're all companies that don't have much to do with cycling per se but like they're there mm-hmm. you know and i tell them that i'm like man you know like toyota you know how many toyotas are in the parking lot Toyota needs to give up some money, bro, to some of these races, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know, sponsor something. I mean, there's like 40 Tacomas but in the But it takes out. somebody like you showing all that on your social media and reaching somebody out with like emails. Nick, and, right? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, I mean, a collective team. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. It, no. it, it takes your team to be the fucking flagship of this to right. be like, look, right. you can come in here. You can do this. You should be, right. you, Yeti you should, should be doing something yeah, like right, that. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, we go to like some of these events are like kind of like festivals almost. And it's like it could be a little bit more of a festival and it could be more like bringing in the people that are just into being outdoors um, just because it's like, you know, it, all those all those companies are all they're like all getting a little bit and we're not getting any of it. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 pretty unfortunate because the for the sport on a global um like globally it's like huge you go to europe they make like huge deals about these races and you come to america and it's like i mean they make a big deal about 30 people showing up to a race that's like the biggest global event of the year in america so the biggest event the biggest downhill event in america will probably get maybe ninety thousand people into this town Mm -hmm. and if you look at that like that's like a small soccer game you know so like yeah. how do we make that different how do we how do we grow the sport you know how do we get more americans to to go across seas to race against like these europeans you know the money has to be going into these programs but the light has to get shined into these programs you got all these american companies supporting all these european racers which um which is um it's just like an indication that like we we don't put enough into it here you know because there's not like you know, we have a, a few American athletes that are like rising stars and have been stars and, and are, are now stars in the sport. But I mean, like, dude, Europe has this shit on lock, dude. I mean, like just England alone, yeah. half of the field is English or French. <laughs> you what's, know what I mean? What's always blown me away about it is like the United States as a as a land mass is gigantic. Like we absolutely have mountains that could like, you know have some really solid tracks on them and right. get the traction and then you know all the uh all the money all the interest all the everything is in europe which like i don't get me wrong i love europe right. but like that's a small land like all right. of europe could fit in like probably the tri-state area right, right. like i don't know about that but. oh close to it dude <laughs> i mean yeah. i don't know i'm listen i don't know all 50 states either so <laughs> i could be wrong <laughs> but <laughs> Are you guys going to Europe this year? You brought that up. I'm actually uh, planning a. I'm actually planning a trip to Europe right now to go mm-hmm. to meet three of our boys in Marabor. They got picked to race the to to represent the United States. So they'll be racing for USA Cycling. They won't be racing for me there. Um, but they're from your team. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. all three of them are from my team. One of them is a junior, and two of them are elite pros. And all three of them, um, they petition to race on this team, and you get selected. So you have to have points and uh, and stuff like that for them to re- consider you. So three of them are going to Marabor, which is in Slovenia, which is you know in Europe somewhere. somewhere. Dracula City, maybe <laughs> <Somewhere. baby. laughs> it right. exists. And uh, and right now, um, I my wife is in Alaska, already planning this trip. So. Mm. Just trying to figure out how to get funding for it because one, I own a bike shop. I'm not a rich dude. And two, uh, we're about to go to nationals too, which is another expense. So um, it's like I said, man, it's a lot of commitment, but um, the level that I'm trying to do it at, you know what I mean? There's, there is no, um, there's no wiggle room. No, Mm -hmm. because like, so these kids have to like, 
uh, accrue points. If you want to be a, a World Cup team, your racers have to be World Cup racers. You can't just make up a team. Right. So they have to accrue points. Points, which is another problem in America, right? So it's very hard for an American racer to accrue the points that it takes to go to Europe to race in the World Cup. So because of that, they have to travel around. They have to go to like uh, South America. Sometimes has pretty cool races that have the mm. points or they have to go to Europe, to France, to Spain and race these like um, these uh, race uh, series out there that also accrue these points. So basically these kids right now are just trying to get enough points to next year go and have a full uh, crack at it, which gives me less than... 15 months to figure out where the hell I'm going to get money to mm-hmm. <laughs> to take a team to Europe. I don't I don't necessarily have to be at every single race. But I mean that's the plan, right? Mm-hmm. So would he go? I mean, that's the plan. The plan yeah. is to get <laughs> enough money together. Um I mean th- these teams are budgeted by companies, right? So you have to find the right company that's going to be like, "Hey, your project sounds great." You know what I mean? Sure, we'll throw like a hundred grand at this, and you and your videographer, and you could take like we'll we'll give you a budget for two, three racers, and make it work, and you figure it out from there. But no one's been knocking at the door or anything. You know what I mean? So it's just me reaching out to all these different companies. Did you start reaching out yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm reaching out, like I said. Um, everybody's a lot of people have been trying to give me advice and trying to tell me to go outside of the cycling industry. So that's what I've been doing. I've been walking around parking lots and jotting down brands that are in these parking lots Mm -hmm. and just trying to reach out to those companies like, Hey man, like your brand is out there. How do you, how do you like, you know, how like convincing them how to be part of something that I'm doing is different though because how do they see the value in what we're doing out there you know how many sales are they getting from having us like whatever them on the van or on our jersey or on our Mm -hmm. pop-ups or whatever it could be you know it's hard to convince a company that's like there's going to be money at the end of it for them yeah you know so but they also have to see the value of attaching themselves to you know a sport where they you know if they're getting you know like you know it would obviously if say yeti came on it would obviously be a fucking loud noise through the community but then yeti would be able to highlight them as well right so then like now it's something that you, you know you got fucking hundreds and thousands of people that are involved in this that are all going to be backing that fucking right. company now because they're being involved in it because right. i mean my friends a tucker races and whatnot and they're diehard with that and that you know if, if there's someone that supports what they're doing that's what they wear and you know what i mean like right, the, right, it's, right. it's mm-hmm. not a the community will give back to a sponsor or whatever that's coming right. through. So there is, it's not like there's not a value there. But there's also something that I want to point out is that most people don't realize that like that's how shit gets done. Is mm-hmm. like you or anyone walking through a parking lot. Like if you don't know what to do, you just start doing shit. Right, right. And you're like, okay, well, I might not know the best way to do this, but I'm going to take the skill sets that I learned that got me here Mm -hmm. and that like, fuck it, man, like this is an angle and like, that's how this shit starts. And that might be a closed door, but it also might open up another door down to an Avenue where you're like, Hey, I stumbled upon this company and they're not really as big as Yeti, but they're this person. And I noticed this and I contacted them and like, that's how you get shit rolling. And sometimes when people, ask me like how i get shit done and so you just do fucking work man as stupid as it sounds the fucking do work shit is like (laughs) you do work like you get your fucking hands dirty you get you figure it out like i have no doubt in my mind that the two of you are going to go on this trip like you know what i mean you're not sitting here from where you came from doing putting bikes together right. all the way here to running this thing and explaining how you're doing social media here you get that shit done because you're a person who gets right. shit done like you're yeah. gonna go it's just the annoyance of how figuring you, out how, how you you're gonna there. get there right. and that's the are shit on our own or are we getting yeah. paid to do but it? that's yeah. but that's the shit that nobody wants to do mm-hmm. and then when people oh, are no, like no, well no. how did you do it well yeah. i dig through shit yeah. to get mm-hmm. there no i uh i've explained that to people plenty of times i'm like mm-hmm. man you know nick isn't free nick costs money you know what i mean so you got to figure out how you get nick paid <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah yeah and yeah, there's yeah. like things that like are important you know like you know you might think you're getting your cool whatever it is man your cool logo your banners your t-shirts whatever it is you wanted to invest your money into you know we got given a choice like where we wanted our money to go to and it was like well 
what's important? All right. Videos. Mm-hmm. We need, uh, like, we need to show people what we're doing out there. And, and I, there is not a lot of Nicks running around. Do you know what I mean? And trying to convince somebody that's never done it before to do it. Especially not this sexy. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, trying to convince somebody to do something that they've never done before and just be like, hey, man, I think we're going to, I think it's going to be great. You know, like, just like trust the process that the videos in the beginning aren't going to be what the videos are going to be two years from now. But neither is the team. The team isn't what it was then. And neither are the videos. The videos aren't what they were then. The equipment that he had wasn't what he had then. So, like, all of us have been putting an investment into it. And each year, the investment starts becoming a little bit more like, oh, it's a financial investment, too. You know? And that's the part that's... that's um, It's not hard to convince people that you're out there doing work, right, man? But it's hard to convince people to be like, hey, man, I'm going to open up a paycheck, Hmm. a check for you for you to keep doing this, right? You know, because giving free product is one thing. But when they're giving you free product and then they're like, all right, we're going to throw you like, you know, so many thousands of dollars to keep this uh, project going. You really have to have a company, man, that's like really into what you're doing. And and that is not easy to do, man. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. especially like I think like the standard is like 10,000 followers for a company even like even remotely take you seriously like yeah as far as like th- like all right anyone that's gonna a Yeti's not gonna use us as a platform because if anything they're gonna make us become more famous right so mm-hmm. to them it's like what value do you really give but it's not that that I'm looking for I'm not looking for me to give you like a like a financial value I want you to invest into something to make it grow yeah Mm -hmm. you know because sometimes like you know the the sport was so huge before and it could be just as huge but like and people need to invest into it again to make that income come back into to make the money come back into it but you know like i'm willing to show all these companies that like hey man i'm we're willing to go out there and put in the work you Mm -hmm. know but like hey man you know Take notice a little bit, you know, because sometimes they don't. Some some of the companies love what we're doing, and there's other companies that are like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like, man, am I sending this to the right email? <laughs> like, you know this, what I mean? Is this the right uh, Toyota? What's yeah, going on here? Yeah, you know, like <laughs> like stuff like that. But like almost 90% of the companies that we've been interacting with have been like pretty supportive about everything and really into what Nick's doing. And... um. And I th- and I think like you know, it's a huge value, man. The, the video I, aspect of it's massive. It's huge, yeah, it's huge. Um, when we wanted to go full video, um, there was no doubt in my mind because now um, it's easier to sell. Like I'm like, all right, well, you want to sponsor the show? Well, what do you do? Well, I have a podcast. Okay, yeah. well, what's that? Well, you listen to it. I don't understand what that is. Or I say, look, go to neveragainstudio.com. I rather then, watch it. Yes, yeah, I. That's. I but but that, I remember <laughs> yeah. sitting down here, and I remember my TV started changing. Right. Where now I would start watching a mountain bike channel, or I would start watching people who do shit where they're like just testing bikes and like, right, right, right. um, what's that one that's like the Ranger or some shit? I forget the dude's name, but uh, a buddy of mine turned me on to him, and I just watch his shit now Mm -hmm. and then there's like the podcast that i watch where i'll just sit down and it's subscription based and it's like then there's some stuff i follow around where it's like steve will do it where it's like a fuck around show but it's like that's my tv now so like i'm trying to get to the point where i'm like all right what i want to build this to is like let's make this a channel and put other shit on it where like you can now because eventually that's where it's all going so if you don't have a video aspect at this point to what you're doing you can't really sell what you're doing at all like if you just had photography or you just wrote a you know a, a, a blog about this shit like you know that it's a dying art now it's like the faster it is the faster it commutes and you need imagery and it needs to be a whole package like you're watching small commercials now and it's crazy that like what you're basically building is a commercial to put out for each race but it's Mm -hmm. what you need to do and then when i started showing this to people and they could go watch the podcast it was easier to tell it was easier to sell the products they're like oh like this guy's not fucking around it's a fully produced podcast that like looks really well 
And yeah. it's just like, you know, but one, in the beginning, we didn't know what we were doing. Even when we went to full video, there was still no real right. format. The format didn't come till down the road, but like, and it's constantly changing. But like, if I didn't have video, I couldn't, I couldn't sell this, yeah. especially if what I want to do next was like traveling. Could you imagine if I was like, oh, going to keep an online diary. Can you right. guys give me 500 a month? Right. <laughs> like, and I'll add you in the diary. Like, right. who the fuck wants that? But right. if I make it sexy and cool and people want to watch it and then I can tag them at the end of it it's worth money to people because it's a commercial yeah and yeah, Nick's yeah. like a little celebrity now so like the little groms are like oh man I made it onto the video <laughs> that's fun Nick, though Nick always has like it's not always like the team it's like the atmosphere what's going on there's yeah. people cheering there's little kids crashing or adults crashing or whatever <laughs> and and uh, it's just funny because like you know we're um, in our little world we're becoming like like the Santa Cruz syndicate. We're becoming yeah. like the team that like like the guys like people like forward to the video and uh which is which is cool because it's not only just us. There's like a couple of dudes out there now that are like doing the same thing and, and even some of the the promotions, like the the race promotions are doing videos on their own like while well, they're hiring people to do the videos. But like some of the guys that they're hiring and doing the videos are like they're really talented kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like it's cool because like at the end of the race, Rika, and there's like Nick's race, there's Nick's video, there's this other dude, nine five, that like his video comes out and then you know, there's like all this like stuff that's coming out and you see our weekends not like before because before yeah. like yeah. i'd go to a race weekend and whatever there would probably be like one promotion company there like doing a video and you know you'd be like watching the whole five minutes just to see if you'd catch a glimpse of yourself for like <laughs> three seconds that's awesome though yeah. because it shows that the sport's growing it's yeah. showing what you're doing is working and then on top of it if you start having these little things pop up now some kid who's in it or an adult who's in it can follow all these different people right. and now they're essentially following the entire circuit or season right. of what you guys are doing absolutely yeah. it's huge you're in a very uh like cool growing area of it but it's also cool that like you're one of the main reasons it started i don't know i'm excited i, mean, I don't know about started it, i'm just saying it's... with like the full video production on the east right. coast yeah, and doing, yeah, 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 you know yeah. you help you you guys are very downplaying what you're doing it's a right. lot of fucking work and you're creating you're creating content for people to follow along right, with your right. hobby which is what you're trying to turn into this thing that you're doing and yeah. it's like you know i see it because it's the same shit i'm trying to do and it ain't fucking easy <laughs> uh, we actually have uh, <laughs> like uh, uh one of the promoters had asked like uh just like interest in nick and you know like you know is he going to be coming out to the race because like they already have their own videos but he wanted to know if we were going to have a video to also compliment <laughs> that video and it's always like yeah you know vic nick can be hired <laughs> Nick yeah, yeah yeah here's Nick the business doesn't card say no to money you know what i mean but hey. you know um love you george i mean i don't i don't uh, i don't like i mean i don't i don't look at people differently just because i, I think they think that mm. like it's all free right and even when it is free it's not free man yeah you know what i mean like you know like the, i don't know man I, like i said i don't know if i'd do it with anybody else right just because I have to live Absolutely. with the dude the whole weekend. Well, know it's know funny I mean? you, you keep saying that, but it's like uh, that. I know you guys had a full podcast before, but like uh, I can't put this across enough. Like the whole vision, and like just talking to George every time you talk to him, he's like he's got something incredible that he wants to do, and I know he downplays that a lot. You downplay that a lot. Okay. Um, you like he wants to change the sport that we're in uh, and that's incredible i mean like they're you talk to other race owners in the in the east coast specifically and they're just like oh yeah yeah I, you know i'm i own this race team it's cool like i enjoy being here and then you talk to george and he's like no i want the east coast to be popping off i want the entire usa to have like a better team i want the the entire country to be this like mountain bike mecca that it is and like i want the sport to grow and like that's why i'm doing it with george like that's why when george asks me at, at 7 p.m to drive to west virginia until and we don't get there till 4 4 30 in the morning like that's why i do it and uh and you know it's funny because uh for for george you know i don't like discussing numbers but i i for george i'd do it for free i don't care and then like but George is just like, no, no, no. Oh, you want Nick? Oh, you got to hire Nick. Like, that's that's just who George is. It's great. Like, he values 
the people that are around him like it's not just me it's the racers too like if uh you know if one of uh if one of the kids that were racing for george is like you know trying to get signed on this big name or something and that name is like well i'll give you like this amount should be like no no did you see this this and this because he doesn't want what's best for george like he understands the big picture like he wants what's best for the people around him and that's like incredible that's hard to find so uh i appreciate all the the good words but uh Jesus. you know <laughs> my guy's crushing it over here and uh you know <laughs> no i mean oh, i mean it takes a specific type of person that does stuff like that and is selfless for uh sports 100%. to grow yeah um what do you guys have planned over uh you know like what's coming up on your schedule as far as like the next couple of months and like summer and everything mm. Yeah, it is summer, isn't it? Oh my gosh. That's it just strange. started, didn't it? It's like today's the solstice. Or something yeah, like, that. like yesterday. Uh, yeah. I mean, awesome, we got awesome weather for overweight people. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, you know. Um, what do we got? We got a race. Um, we have a race Sunday? this weekend. Hell you yeah. should come out and check Where it out. Where is it? At Blue Mountain. I got a pop up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, mm. But when well. you but this is what I'm saying is I want to come out with the van and mm -hmm. like capture what we're talking about. Yeah, we that. have a really cool event happening in New Jersey. At, uh, at Mountain Creek uh, mm -hmm. Bike Park. And the way that they're going to have us uh, pitted up is in their public... Par well, sorry. It's not a public parking lot, but it's a big parking lot. I don't think anybody will notice if you're making burgers out there. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, but, uh, and, and then, I mean, like, dude, we have a full schedule. This next month we have, like, uh, U.S. Nationals in Colorado... Yeah. We have uh, this national that's happening in New Jersey. That's like in, uh, actually, that's in September. And then in August, we're going to Marabor. But we have a bunch of races in between them. And I don't even want to think about my schedule right now, dude. <laughs> There's so much. Yeah. yeah. Somebody was like, uh, I was like, oh, man, I got these next two weekends off, man. I was like, I'm going to go ride my bike and all types of stuff. And they were like, correction, dude. You have a race next week. <laughs> I was like, damn it, man. There goes. So. We so. always. Uh, we always pack the helmets and the bikes and we're yeah, like dude. yeah hell yeah we're gonna go to this awesome bike park let's yeah. get you know let's take like an hour and go grab a lap and then it's like oh wait george is uh you know burning the midnight oil working on the kids bikes making sure that they're like not gonna have a mechanical i'm out there during the yeah. day so it's Nick's, just like Nick's oh, like shit. just <laughs> well. yeah it, um it's like the one thing that has to change on these trips is that we can't bring bikes no more mm -hmm. just because Focus. it's like almost like pointless like we go out there with like like almost thinking that this is gonna be like a vacation, and it's it never is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like like you feel like oh man, we were out there, we're like in a different state or whatever. It's freeing, and it's freeing totally. But you're not like you're not on vacation. You no, know what I mean like literally like <laughs> right. like we're rushing out there, we're rushing back, or mm -hmm. both rushing back to full time jobs, and um, and uh, I feel like as it goes on it's getting more and more serious and it's not because of anything being added it's just like we're just trying to step our own game up yeah you know? like which nick is, sees which is what i yeah. get back you put it out far enough All right you start yeah. holding yourself accountable yeah, for dude, where you want to be yeah, at you know what i mean like i mean i'm sure nick looks at his video every time he looks at his video they're probably it. never good enough right oh yeah and and i always keep saying to him man every video you come out with it's like better than the last one it's not saying that the last one was bad it's like the last one was great yeah. but this one was like great or dude i hate watching my own videos yeah. i go back and watch videos like um from uh bond like two and a half years ago and i'm just like shit and i go and watch like the first video i ever made in general i'm like what the hell is this dude um so yeah i mean it's like you constantly have to set the bar and then just like be hypercritical of yourself and like yeah, whether that's healthy or not, I don't, I don't know. I'm it is for on, what but, it is yeah. for what you're trying to do. I mean, yeah. with um, like I have a whole new show coming out that I'm going to do a cooking show, and that's totally mm. different than doing this shit. Right. But Hell like, yeah. what are you going to be cooking? Everything, everything that I'm going to be selling, and it's going to be a giant <laughs> fucking commercial. <Hell> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't learn nothing in this basement. <laughs> Perfect. Um, awesome. It's going to pay for the rent. Um, <laughs> but um. Um, I've I've always wanted to do cooking stuff, but like that's a whole nother show, and like Damn. I'm comfortable because I've done this a hundred times. But even with food, like it took years. It, like my friends used to 
all my friends, you're wasting all your time. Go sell food. You're wasting your time doing all this shit. Go sell food. And they're right. And but like I also don't want the responsibility of a fucking restaurant. That is a nightmare. Yeah, but like for sure. now where I have it to a point where like like what you said, it's like I still don't like my burgers, even though everybody's like, yo, and it took me a fucking year mm -hmm. till I was okay with selling that version of the burger. But I still, to this day, every time I do a pop-up, there's something that I, I'm like, all right, you can do it this fast or this way. Like, it's just constantly learning. And all that's if, holding yourself to that standard is only going to make one, everything better that you're putting out. And two, mm -hmm. it's going to keep pushing you to grow. And like, there was a point maybe last year where I just like let go and I was yeah. like, okay, like your life is going to be this crazy and this is always going to be this way because you do not ever settle for like my therapist always tells me, she's like, you get to a goal and then push it away. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, you never like, you never, you never get to the goal because you, you don't appreciate have, the you goal. Just yeah. So like, I'll do it sometimes, but like for most of the time, it's like one, it's like, I like working. It has to be my work most of the time, but like mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed putting work in and like just right. doing that working class like i just i never oh, yeah. was afraid to get my hands dirty so like my work ethic's always going to be there and my drive's always going to be there and then when you don't settle for the shit that is your two main things to be the best it's just a constant fucking cycle of just work work harder work harder yeah. work harder i mean all the shit yeah. you guys are talking about I believe you're going to get to all these goals just because you're not going to stop fucking working. I mean, look Hell at yeah. where the fuck you brought this from. Right. Yeah, for nothing. Real. I mean, <laughs> like you and I were from nothing. <laughs> yeah, for real. You and I were recording videos. Uh, you know, I did crappy stuff on my GoPro, and uh, I would film you, and yeah. and like we would just be out great. riding our local yeah. trails just because it was fun. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, you you mentioned before about. Um, like uh nine to five media and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and uh it's funny because like some people and i don't know if this is just a lehigh valley thing i don't but everybody looks at people that do the same thing as them as their competition yeah. and and i just hate that so much like um every time i talk to somebody in the lehigh valley they're like oh i shoot photos too and they're like oh cool like I hope that there's enough for both of us. There's always enough. Yeah. Right. Like I never, and like, uh, especially in the mountain bike industries too, but like your peers are your peers. And like, if they do the same thing as you, fantastic, learn and grow from it. And like, it pumps me up so much when I see somebody like nine to five media out yeah. there, or I see um, Jack Rice from uh, Vital, um, or I see like your, um, Sor Soranto, Andrew, Andrew Santoro, Andrew Santoro from uh, from like ESC and yeah, everybody's like, really just pump each other up, dude. What, like it's great. Yeah, everybody's oh, really man. excited about um, this new energy that 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 racing has in it again. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's talking about it. Like all the guys, like it's funny because like you know um, in the morning there'll be like little media meetings in, in my pits <laughs> yeah. and like all the media guys yeah, will be dude. like hanging out there talking about the day like what they're going to shoot how they're going to shoot it and it's great man because like you don't see a lot of that like you know like it's always like a doggy dog world that everybody feels like they're the only guy that could be out there doing it and when you get a group of people that are like all it's like man we're like fuck what's going on with us let's mm -hmm. make this thing grow yeah because Hell if yeah. the thing grows we grow with it because yeah. we're at the base of it we're yeah. at the bottom of it so like instead of like all of us banging heads to see who gets there first let's grow this shit up together mm -hmm. and 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 we all share each other's media we all pump each other up you know yeah. what i mean and yeah and uh it, and uh, didn't and used I, to be like that and it didn't used to be like that and it <laughs> looks all. like and it and now it's like it just it looks more uniformed and people are just more into it and it, people are just sharing it more and and it i think like if it's for the better of the sport to be honest with you because mm -hmm. um it's a tiny ass little sport man you know what i mean mm -hmm. and and even though i think like and when you look at it like yeah i guess there isn't a ton of customers to go around but i mean like that's because like it it gets kept in a little bubble right and you got to make it grow you got to help it grow you got to help it flourish and mm -hmm. you know get more people involved get more families involved you know um and that all counts man it's like crazy to see like as many 
kids and their mom and dads out there on track. I was like, oh, nuts, dear. man. Yeah. Like, I don't have the heart to send my kid down a mountain like that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, holy shit, man. That kid's like 10 years old and he's out here. Like, one of the kids on our team Hell is yeah. 11 years old, dude. That's crazy. Total and, insane. and complete professional. I can't even... Yeah. Can't even go. This kid will not take a picture unless he has all his gear on, and his helmet has to be placed right, and the bike has to be placed right, and mm -hmm. and you don't. That's not. I mean, it's taught right, but it's like, you know, um, it's cool to see that, you know, because it just shows that um, that there's some kids that are like really taking this serious and absolutely like growth in it, you know. There's yeah. a reason like we don't. It doesn't feel hard to take it this seriously. Right. Like we were f filming a bunch of dudes that were just like stopping mid race run to chug a beer. It's like, right, right. Okay, fair enough. But yeah. like, that's one a, a whole different video. But like, uh, you know, the fact that the the kids that were like supporting here in this, um, specifically the kids that you are supporting here in this, are like taking it that incredibly seriously. Like that just motivates the hell out of me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, I, this kid yeah. got like devices strapped. The one kid, dude, yeah. and our one guy Matt is probably. Um, is like somebody that makes me nervous to work with, all right? <laughs> like, it takes a lot to make me nervous, man. I've been in a lot of situations in life that you should be very nervous about. <laughs> and I get nervous around the kid. I don't know, because he's a, like a total professional. And What are some of those situations? No, <laughs> <laughs> and, like the, and like, I know what he expects from me, and he mm -hmm. expects the word pro builds to come out in my performance. Do you know what I mean? Hell yeah. So, and that kid's a total professional, so... You know, when you have people like that, man, it elevates the whole thing. Obviously, Nick is out there. He's not going to shoot a crappy video of, like, this phenomenal elite athlete, right? Dude. You want to show him at his at his best graces and, you know, and and it's, and it's, I don't know. I think, like, when you surround yourself around people that just, like, step up their daily life really high, it's hard for you to be, like... Man, I'm not going to get up at five o'clock in the morning yeah, to go do this. Right. You know what I mean? Because this dude yeah. is doing it. You know, and mm -hmm. I mean, I I commend it. some of these kids. Men are like like top students. Like I mean, top students go to phenomenal schools, study and and train and come out on any given weekend and put down some of the most amazing performances of the weekend. Crazy. And uh, and they're on my team. You know, so it's like. You know, I, I when I go there on the weekend, man, it's like, you know, some people are like, yo, man, you know, like I see other people doing kind of what they think they're doing, like what I'm doing. Right. Like, yeah, it kind of looks like what you're doing is what I'm doing. But I'm doing I'm I'm putting a lot more on my plate, you know, because there's the reason why I have upper level racers like that is because I offer them like that, the type of um the support. support that yeah. they need you know yeah. what i mean and yeah and at, at any race and uh, you know nick's not there all day nick's like on the hill mm -hmm. doing his thing but like all day long man i have people coming up to me and the one thing i say a lot to a lot of people is everyone's race this weekend is the most important thing to them mm -hmm. this weekend but i have four guys that have the most important race of their weekend is here and i have the responsibility of all four of them on my plate mm -hmm. so I love you. I love what you're doing out here. I support I support this sport. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. If you knew what I was putting into this, you would understand. But I I'm I can't help you out. You know what I mean? And uh and a lot of flat tires, a lot of A lot of, of like flat tires, parts a lot of like, broken hey, parts, a lot of like you know, and, and until people understand that like there's certain people out there that are on a different objective, right? And I'm there to support those four kids. That's what the whole objective mm -hmm. is to lift up the sport by helping those kids rise up, right? Mm -hmm. To show them you can do this, man. Like this kid's going to Europe next year. He got the points. He got the, he did it the right way to get there. And you can do the same exact thing to get there. But, you know, there has to be like a, mm -hmm. like a, like somewhere to see it. You know, yeah, I don't know. You feel what I'm saying? No, I, I know exactly like, what you're there saying. There could be another dude doing a podcast in like three years from now because he's seen you do it and he's like, All right, mm -hmm. there's this guy in Nazareth that did this podcast and not no bullshit way. He like legitimately did like real cool thing. And I think I could do that. It's weird because I, I do get conversations where uh, people reach out to me and they'll be like, 
hey, like you said this on this show and it was like super motivational because like there's some people that don't get the show as far as like what I'm trying to do. Mm. And like when someone gets the show and they're like, hey man, like you motivated me to change this aspect of my life. It's these weird moments where you're like, oh, like you're changing, like it. the format's working. You're reaching people on a level where you right. want change in them and you're reaching people and you're trying to do what you're doing. And, you know, uh, I am trying to make this the, the best podcast in the valley and i I, but i want to be bigger than that so it's like you know i want to get out further where this is a network and i can put different shows on it and i can work with different people and start my own cooking show and build this thing that's for others to enjoy because i'm obsessed with creating and have to do it or i'm like super fucking depressed and like when somebody gets that and they like are changing their lives because of a podcast i did three years ago it's it's weird because i don't pick my head up from my work often i just keep my fucking head down and i keep working because i have goals and they're way the fuck out there and the older i get the less i can hang out with my friends and the less i can start fucking around and the less i'm you know my i mean my only time that i fuck off is now like basically saturdays and if i fuck off too hard then sunday fucked up and it's like Mm -hmm. that gap for the margin of for error has become smaller and smaller and smaller the more professional and the more i do it and it's just like i said it's just holding yourself to a standard where you can grow something you're extremely passionate about and like Mm -hmm. it's awesome having you guys down here and seeing like what the power of media has done through using him as a tool through his passion to connect through your passion and now the two of you are passionately driving this thing that's changing the fucking sport and putting more eyes on it i don't know i uh i'm privileged that you introduced you because you told me about them and i know you're good people so i'm like no that's you could have said anybody you were bringing down and i've been like cool we are we are going to get into it but like from listening to like what the two of you are doing, it's it's a fucking very unique, cool story, and not a lot of people get to do what the two of you are doing. Not a lot of people get to have the relationship the two of you are doing. And what's cool is that everybody gets to see the finished product. Right, right, right. George yeah. and I do have a very passionate relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up. I gotta piss like a motherfucker. Sure. And uh, I don't want to keep you guys here too late. I want to give everybody a chance to have both of you plug where you can see all of the content you're talking about and then um if you want to plug if anyone's interested in working with you that you can turn them down um i would love to, <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> but yeah i just kind of want to give you guys a chance to plug your social media and let you know kind of where the, everybody can start following along that does not follow along to what you're doing oh is this me uh, yeah we'll sure start is. with you uh so uh our social media is pro builds uh, 610 and Pro Builds Racing and all our videos are brought to you by Mutt Society and that's at Mutt Society and Nick. Nick does all our production and all our videoing and all our finished product and uh, yeah that's it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah I mean thanks so much for having me on. This of course fun. man. I enjoy uh... You guys have an open open door policy anytime you guys want to come down here and drink beers or whatever just bullshit. Perfect. I'll be here uh, at 8 a.m. tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be here (laughs) editing the podcast. You can help. I have Final Cut. I hope you know it. (laughs) Perfect. I'll I'll fuck around for a little bit. That's cool. (laughs) No, but uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, My Instagram is the Great Nicolini. Um, You know, I am privileged enough, thankfully, to work with only people I enjoy working with. So, you know, come give me a follow. I post silly photos all the time. And, uh, you know, if you don't, that's okay too. I still love you. Follow him. <laughs> follow him. Uh, follow Pro Builds. Follow along with uh, the what they're doing. It's a cool story. If this is the first time you're listening or watching, you can go to neveragainstudio.com. That has everything you need, never again. If you're a small business looking for help with apparel, commercials, video, anything like that, I can hook you up and get you going. We have a sponsorship program as well. Like I said, apparel is my bread and butter. I do not run in apparel. I don't like people think I have like screen printers and shit. I wish I did. I'd have way more money than I do now, but I work uh, direct sales with Axelrad so I can get you anything you need. Uh, that's never again, studio.com. We also are in the munitions business. We are at Nazo ammo.com. We're going to be running a special for the 4th of July and kind of like doing a launch for that business. But I have a shit ton of nine millimeter and I can get a bunch of nine millimeter. There is a no limit purchase on that. So you can get as much as you want. If you want to buy me, out you can i will have more the next week so that's nazoammo.com 
gmail.com, sign up for the mailing list, and we are going to have pickups on Fridays if you're local, and I can ship anywhere in PA. Thank you guys so much for coming on. I think I'm finally done sweating, and I now have to piss. Uh, like I said, anytime you guys want to come on and bullshit about any of this stuff, you guys are more than welcome. Oh, yeah, man. Thank Love you both. Cheers. Cheers.